Hey booktubers, Lisa here. Today we are going to be talking about the books that I read during the month of November. Eight books in total, three five-star books and one one-star book. My first one-star review to a living author. <sighs> but we'll get into that. But because this is November, it's my last chance to tell a Thanksgiving joke. Why do pilgrims' pants always keep falling down? Because they wear their belts on their hats. All right, I'll have to stick to my day job. One of the books talks about understanding your why. This week I was thinking, why do I make these videos on books? This is what I came up with. Books create ideas, ideas change the world. So let's change the world one book at a time. The first book that I read this month was Dune, which was also one of the most surprising. Chapter one, if you had asked me to rate this book, I would have said one star. I was overwhelmed, confused. There were so many different characters. They would just have quotations. You couldn't even tell who was talking. And I think that's a common complaint with Dune that people either really love it or they go confused with the whole book and they hate it with a passion. I did develop a whole nother video with seven tips to how to read Dune if you're struggling. But by the end, it was my favorite favorite book. I loved it. It was filled with adventure. It was so unexpected. Compared to all the other books I've read, it was so many different surprises. There is a Dune movie that's going to come out. It was supposed to come out in December of 2020. It has been postponed to October of 2021. So if you are somebody who needs to read the book before they see the movie adaptation, definitely make sure you pick up Dune. Five stars. It covers so many deep topics. It was so complex. I know when I said I read The Great Gatsby that it would be hard to imagine a book that was more complex. This was more complex and it was longer. I cannot describe how amazed I was at this book. I had to read it every single second, even on my lunch break. I was breaking this out. Five stars is my favorite book. Definitely go pick this up. Don't give up if you read the first chapter and you hate it. Check out that other video. I'll put the link up above too if, in case you're interested in this. First, In Dune, we are introduced to Paul Atreides. He is the son of Duke Leto. And they have some rather exciting news. They're going to be relocating to a new planet. This new planet has lots of challenges. It is a desert wasteland with giant worms squirming about. However, despite the planet being this wasteland, it has a very valuable resource. It's called Melange. It is a drug or a spice that enables the person who's ingesting it to see a little bit into the future. Definitely pick up Dune, very interesting and action packed. It covers a lot of different deep topics, but it's also fun and exciting at the same time. The second book that I read this month was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. The premise of this book was incredible, which was in the late 1600s, early 1700s, we have our main character, Addie or Adeline LaRue. She's getting married to this guy named Roger. Roger hasn't really done anything wrong per se. She just doesn't wanna get married to anybody. She doesn't wanna belong to anybody. She calls on this dark, mysterious figure named Luke who appears on the eve of her wedding she makes this bargain. She doesn't want to belong to anybody and he can have her soul when she doesn't want it anymore. So she will essentially live forever. However, as with all good things, there's a catch. People will not remember her as soon as they leave, as soon as she leaves their sight and she cannot say her name until 300 years goes by 
Addie walks into a bookshop where there is somebody who knows her name and knows her, remembers her. This book, the author's writing style was really lyrical. I enjoyed reading the book. I enjoyed the author's writing, but the characters were not really relatable. I, neither one of the characters I thought, yes, I just really enjoy this character. It didn't have that feeling to it, so I wasn't emotionally invested in the book as much as I should have been. So I think I gave this uh, 3.5 stars, maybe four star rating. It was, it was a decent book. It was a page turning book. However, I just didn't really connect with the book as much as I would have liked to. The third book this month is this book, Leaders Eat Last by Simon Snack. This is a nonfiction book. This what cover, the premise was why some teams pull together and some teams don't. Essentially, it boiled down to when people go to work, they should enjoy going to work. Although I did enjoy the premise of the book that you really want good leadership, it was extremely redundant. It also talked a lot, or there was some portion about millennials, and I did think it was a little bit unfair to millennials at times. He, Simon the author, wrote about how millennials have unrealistic expectations of promotion. However, in defense of my millennials, I think there is a big difference between showing up for a job and work there for two weeks and then demand a promotion. I think it is something to be said that the pension area is gone. I'm not going to be eligible for a pension, so if I work 30 years at a place, I'm not going to receive a pension on the other end of it. Nothing in life is, my employment is not guaranteed for life. I'm not necessarily a lifer. However, when am I then going to be promoted? Waiting 10 years isn't really practical. In addition, not only do I not have a pension, we have the opposite of a pension. We have something called student loans. So where in the past, it might have been appropriate to wait 15 years to get some type of promotion or raise. Those days are gone because we're drowning in student loan debt, which is a fixed payment that we must make every single month, no matter what, no matter business conditions. Also with technology, we might be doing the job of three people because we have technology we're expected to do more with less people. In those instances, I think it is reasonable to ask for promotion. In addition, day, the times are different than back in the pension era. Now, if you ask for promotion, your boss says no, all you have to do, if you have a good skill set, which is in demand, you're adaptable, you can change, you can do different softwares, you can adapt to new regulations, you're not afraid to take on new challenges, just go back to your desk and wait for a recruiter to call from LinkedIn. Times have changed, some companies have not. The next book I read this month, this is a short story by Philip Pullman. This I rated five stars, although I will say this book is a continuation of his Dark Materials trilogy with Lyra and Pantaliman. It has recently been turned into a very successful HBO miniseries. It continues after the very last book of his Dark Materials trilogy, The Amber Spyglass. There were even a few points in the book that I was struggling to recall all the little nuances mentioned in the last book. And I read the book, The Amber Spyglass, within this last year. That being said, the first time I read this book, I thought the story was really simple. Admittedly, I was preoccupied because the book is so short. I wasn't emotionally ready to let my two favorite characters go. That being said, the second time that I read this story, wow, it is so complex, especially in the context of what some of the meanings are as they unfolded in his Dark Materials trilogy. So I just, I absolutely enjoyed it. I loved it. Even the meaning serpentine, it has four different definitions. 
So when you read the book and you kind of simmer on that, you have lots of things to noodle on. I really just enjoyed it. If you haven't already, his Dark Materials trilogy, pick it up. I just love it. It is my favorite series. If you love animals, you will be just, you'll love it. Philip Pullman, I think he should have a master class in writing, particularly how you can get the reader to root for the characters. And he doesn't rely necessarily on just main characters. He can build up a second character in another book and you'll care for it just as much. And you'll just be on a whirlwind adventure with this person because you just feel so emotionally involved with his characters that he's built up. I just, I love his Dark Materials trilogy and Philip Pullman is an awesome writer. He is a really great activist and he gives to charity. I am, like I said, probably his biggest fan. Definitely pick up Serpentine and if you haven't already, his Dark Materials trilogy. Our next book I'm very excited about. This is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. As I mentioned, it is a thriller. I first heard about this author because I read the audiobook the last time I lied. It was so creepy and I was so creepy because I was listening to it as an audiobook, but at the time it was before the pandemic. As soon as I would hop in my car, I would listen to my audiobook, but I was so into my audiobook. As soon as I got to my destination, I was just sitting out there listening because I had to know who did it. And there were so many surprises and it turned out completely different, differently than I thought. And then I went back and I was trying to think like, oh, would this work? And then I'm trying to, you know, put all the pieces together. I love that he, you have a clean ending. You'll know who did it and you can go back and figure out like, oh yeah, that's how it all worked. But this one, there is a girl or a, a old lady, a woman in her early 30s named Maggie. Her family, particularly her father, is famous because he wrote a book about a haunted house that they all, her whole family stayed at like 20, 25 years ago. They stayed there for 20 days and they ran for their lives in fear. Dad wrote this best-selling book. Now dad has just recently passed away and Maggie finds out, oh, we still own this creepy place. <coughs> but Maggie does not believe in ghost stories. She does not believe in what her dad wrote. She goes back to Bainbury Hall with the idea that she's going to flip it because she's a contractor and sell it for a profit. While Maggie's there, there's some spooky things that happen and it flips back and forth between Maggie's current day experience and it cuts back to what Maggie's father wrote in the book. Of course, even Maggie doesn't know if what her father said is true or not. So we're trying to figure it out and you're trying to figure it out all along with her. Did he write the truth? Did he not? Who did it? And you have all these suspects. And then, especially with last time I lied, I'm like, I don't want to be caught off guard. Who could it be? Who would it be? And I was like trying to figure it out the whole way. Like, I'm not going to be caught off guard. I'm going to know who it is. I'm going to figure it out. So I super enjoyed this. It was definitely a page turner. Um, if you read this, I did an extra video on this. The first portion is spoiler free. The last portion talks about the ending and like a rant about the, the, the book on the, the book. So if you read this and you're more, you're interested in my thoughts and you want to discuss, make sure to check out that video. This book, I gave 4.5 stars and I probably would have given this book five stars had I not read or had I not didn't, did the audiobook the last time I lied, but this was almost as good as last time I lied, 4.5 stars. The next book, this is by Michael J. Fox. This is No Time Like the Future. If you watched my TBR video, this was not on here, this was a uh, must read. I read this on Twitter that he had this new book coming out. I had to pick it up. For those of you who don't know who Michael J. Fox is, some of you might be too young to remember. 
He played Marty McFly in Back to the Future. He was the guy who was doing the skateboarding and he got in the DeLorean, that like weird looking car. He had to go 88 miles per hour, Christopher Lloyd. He was also more recently on The Good Wife. He was Lewis Canning, one of the attorneys going up against Alicia Florrick. Any in any case, beyond being a very famous movie star, Michael J. Fox was also diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at the age of 28 or 29. The reason why I was really interested in hearing from Michael J. Fox, particularly this book, this book is called An Optimist's View on Mortality. He, in addition to battling Parkinson's disease, he also has had some medical setbacks talking about do you make lemonade out of lemons and how do you choose to live your life? This book I picked up because although I am not suffering from Parkinson's disease, I was diagnosed with a rare neuromuscular disorder this year, year called POTS. It is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which that's why everybody calls it POTS. It has a cute little name, but it's anything but. It means that my nerves do not communicate correctly to my muscles, including my heart. So when I stand up, the blood pools in my legs and I can faint. Difficulty walking, there can be tremors. Um, I can have runaway heart heartbeat. So if I try to go to sleep, zero minutes of deep sleep. When my cardiologist measured my heart, I had more than 2,000 abnormal heartbeats in a 24 hour period. My life is definitely not how I had expected it would go this year. In addition to the, the pandemic, I've been battling this neuromuscular disorder and I wanted some tips to how to stay positive as with everybody and everything going on recently the darkness looms close however however long or short my life is I don't want to spend it wallowing or sad although I do have every right and I'm justified to have a little pity party that's not how I want to live so Michael J Fox he was the narrator of the audiobook I also got the audiobook it was really cool and he was funny. The topics are heavy, but he made it really light and fun. He also has a charming little section about his dog Gus. And I'm an animal lover. If you're an animal lover, definitely check it out. If you're going through a tough time, chronic illness, job loss, whatever, he'll definitely give you a better perspective, give you some hope in a, in a, dark, t or in a dark time. And now that was that was my five star book. I absolutely one of my my last five star book. The next one is What Would Frida Do by Ariana Davis. This was my one star book and this was the first one star I've given to a living author. And I just set up my Goodreads account. I have got like two friends. So if you want to connect, I'll leave my information below. Oh gosh. Okay. So what would Frida do? If, what would you expect this book to be about? I expected it to be about Frida Kahlo. It says on the back, self-help biography. Uh, I picked it up thinking I'm going to learn more about Frida Kahlo because I'm interested. I'm a feminist. I'm a social activist. I want the world to be a better place. I want women to live boldly and proudly, even if it is, you know, challenging. I wanted that encouragement and I picked this up. There were very few facts about Frida Kahlo and the, the facts that were in here were repeated ad nauseum. Oh, I don't feel like I learned anything more from reading this book, I, it probably could have been put in a page and a half, the actual facts of this book. The author, the writing style was not matured and some of the advice was horrible, horrible. Here are two examples. One example was 
feeling down, need to be inspired, drink tequila, but just drink in moderation. Why would anybody go to AA? They could just read this book and say, oh, I had the disclaimer. I don't need to go to AA anymore. I don't have a drinking problem. And not only that, this book was supposed to be about being uniquely you and how you are enough. Not encouraging people to fill themselves up with alcohol. That was serious. And then I was thinking, who is this author? And she looks younger than some of my pair of shoes. As a creator, as a YouTube creator, the first thing they kind of teach you is if you start off your video and you say, I want to teach you seven tips to grow your business. Okay, great. Who are you? Why do I care about you? Anybody with a computer can type a book. What makes you qualified to give me business advice? Then you might say something like, I took my business from $100,000 in annual sales to 10 million in 12 months. Then you go, oh, well now I'm listening because this person had success following these seven rules and they have proven success. I wanna listen, I'm going to check them out. Or you can do it through education. You can say, I have a master's in business. I've spent 15 years researching this and I've been published in 10 business publications. Okay, probably not as good as the first person, but you've somehow you brought your skill set up to up to par. I'm willing to listen to see if your your tips make sense. But they didn't make sense. And there was even one. I and I'm not joking, the author actually wrote this. I dressed up as Frida Kahlo for Halloween and all my friends were staring. Sorry, I don't know you. I picked this book up because it was, I thought it was about Frida Kahlo. I don't know you. And you're probably a lovely person, but that's not why I picked up this book. She even had several sections talking about how she would envision Frida Kahlo and how she would talk to her. It's just like, oh my gosh. But, so that's why I was very nervous writing a one-star review for a living author. But I will say as a creator, I hate when people just go, uh, thumbs down, and they don't leave a comment. I can't improve if somebody just gives me a thumbs down. Why? Why do you not like my set? Was it too boring? Did I go on too long about a book? Do I not cover the books that you like? Am I too old for you? I mean, that stuff I can't change. But, you know, my age, I can't change. But like my set, the books, you know, how I'm doing my set, I can change that stuff. But if you just click thumbs down, they can't improve. So every, lots of people gave this author one star reviews, but nobody had the guts to say, okay, these are the things that you need to improve. I put myself out there. It's not to say that I think she should not be commended for her ambition. That was one of the things, do you guys remember that show? Tiger King with Joe Exotic. Okay, that guy was like crazy. But the thing that I did really like about the guy was his ambition. He was running for all these offices. He employed all these people. I mean, I don't think his practices were good, but he did employ all these people. He had all these different cats. He raised all these things. He went from a you know blank piece of land and he built up this huge zoo he was regularly doing YouTube videos more than I do. And he built up this audience. He got a film crew. He did a lot with it. You know, he, he did get off the couch and do something. So I give this author a lot of props for writing a book, even though, you know, she is one of the people who just has a computer and then seeing it all the way through publication, through getting notes and reviews and shopping it around and all that stuff. I do give her props and I don't mean to discourage her, but I did give her some feedback. I don't know. Has any author ever flipped out at you for leaving a bad review? Let me know down below. Let me know if you think I did the right thing or if I should have just given a thumb a one star and not said anything, but I just, uh, as creator to creator, I just can't do it. And the last book that we have, These Violence De These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This book, I kind of judged a book by its cover or a book by its description. 
And the, I'm gonna be totally honest why I picked this book and I would never have picked this otherwise. I was typing in each book of the month has a book that you can get every month. They give you so many choices. I typed the title in and it had like a good score to do a video. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm getting this book because this was the description. This was the description. An updated version of Romeo and Juliet based in 1926 Shanghai, Roma and Juliet from rival gang families must come together to solve a problem. At this point, I thought this book's gonna be either complete garbage or it's gonna be awesome. I don't know where it's gonna fall. So I picked up the book and it's her, and it's the author's first book. I believe she's still in college. So it's a young author. Picked it up, expecting it to just be drivel. It was surprisingly very good. The writing was very advanced, complex. It was lyrical. It was somewhat interesting. Although I will say some of the things that I didn't like. One, the characters were not relatable. They were from rival gang families. In the original Romeo and Juliet, and forgive me, I think I was Romeo and Juliet's age when I last read it. But what gave them their specialness, they were young, they were 14 years old or 15. I think one of them just turned 15. And they were from these warring families, but they were kind of swept up, swept up in the feud, but they weren't actually doing any of the violence themselves. And you're like, oh, they, they were just young and in love. But the, the, the characters here, they're from warring families. They were portrayed as ruthless and not characters that you would say, oh yeah, I hope that their love survives and I really care if they die. Like, like oh man, you should, you should go read his Dark Materials trilogy and read Philip Pullman because he will definitely teach you to write characters that you deeply, deeply, deeply care about. The other thing, I felt like this book kind of lost its identity. Romeo and Juliet was a drama. It was a, you know, tragic romance. This had had romance. It was a thriller. It was a drama. It was fantasy. It was like all these things. It was too many different like things all put together. And I know some authors would say, okay, well, I don't like being pigeonholed into one genre, but I think it was trying to capture too many different things. And with a thrill, if it was just supposed to be a thriller, I felt it was too, too, the pacing was too slow. I never felt like, oh, they're just about to solve everything. It was interesting and it was page turning and I did find myself like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I, I was definitely reading it. Um, but, and I did enjoy it, but it just wasn't. It wasn't quite there yet. This was a solid 3.5 in my opinion, which is which is really saying something because that is just as good as some of those veteran veteran writers. I also did give this this author some feedback because I want to help people improve and encourage them, especially if, as as a young writer. If you know, people should tell you those things early on so that you don't write books for 10, 20 years thinking, oh my gosh, why didn't you tell me this? It's like having, you know, ketchup on your shirt and like, why didn't you tell me I had some big stain on my shirt all day long I walked around like this? I don't know, that's my opinion. I know lots of people are just like, uh, no, I'm not, I wouldn't say anything. That's it for November. Make sure that you stay tuned for my December TBR coming out. If you believe that books change the world, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. I'm Lisa of Troy. Peace.